Hello? What is the problem? Uh-uh. This is not, this is not happening. Okay. Do you want to go back in? You want to? No, you're fine. Everything's fine, except it's not going on. The, my, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my restream page, and it's not. It's that old. Okay, one. here, there's an eyeball up in the top, and it looks like there's people joining. My darling, does that mean it's happened? We are live. Oh my goodness, y'all! How's this working? We're live. People are coming in. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I, even though it says I'm offline on the reason. Hello, everybody. Are, are we just now? There you are. Oh, praise okay. the Lord. We're I'm live, Leanne intro. Morgan. Hello, Leanne Morgan. Y'all, please oh. forgive this intro. I sang, come on in. I, we've been talking, having the best time. And then I realized, I looked at, we weren't live, but we are. We are. We have 599 people joining us already. Okay. We, uh, okay. I'm sitting in my studio slash office slash whatever, and <laughs> I'm thrilled that y'all are making a deal. Thank you for coming in. Y'all scared me. I don't even know how long we've been live, really. I don't know, but Isn't it a good, a, it's, this angel is so fun to talk to. You're so naturally funny, Mark, and oh, I know please. you get that all the time, but honey, you could be sitting up here going, burr, 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 and people would be on fire. Well, oh, Leanne Morgan, I am so thrilled to finally meet you. I discovered you two years ago on the YouTube, and I thought, Lord, I thought I had a Southern accent. This lady, now where were you raised, and where does that accent come from? Okay, I was raised in Adams, Tennessee, and it is on the Kentucky-Tennessee border, northwest of Nashville, and it is... Uh, all my people have been from there for generations, and they are farming people. And I had a little woman tell me that, uh, and that I think was in the know, that uh, it's a lot of people that are Welsh and Irish that settled there and then and have always farmed. And so that rural farm talk mixed with Welsh is, and you know, is made this accent. It's very thick, and people never guess Tennessee. They always think I'm from from Georgia or South Carolina or Mississippi, but um, but it's Middle Tennessee, and it's a town of 500 people that I was raised in, and do, they are precious. And do, I and there, and I think it's growing because it's real close to Nashville, so everybody in the country is trying to move there because there's land left. Do all of the people have this? exact accent or or is it oh, a little stronger in your family or what i think maybe a little stronger in my family but yeah we i mean we're all pretty rural it's very rural and um but it, my sister lives over in clarksville she married a hoopty day man and and they even they've got a strong accent now what's and a what's a, what's a hoopty do man <laughs> i say that kind of country club you know oh, country oh. club man Mm -hmm. oh, got a little money. His people went to college, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh. <laughs> yeah. She married him, and he's highfalutin. But it, even he has a strong accent, and his mama, Harriet, who's no longer with us, who was uh, precious, she and an English professor, even she had a very strong draw. Oh. And she talked like this, and you could just hang on every word. But you know what's crazy, Mark, is people have said to me, that cannot be real. Your accent is not real. And I think, do you really think I've got the energy at 56 years old to fake this? I mean, <laughs> and if I was going to fake an accent, I mean, I think I'd go for probably an Irish or a, uh, I've always loved a good rogue. You know, I yeah. wouldn't, I don't think it'd be this one. <laughs> People say that all the time. They go, what in the world? That can't be real. Uh -uh. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Okay. This so is it. So for 22 years, you have been doing comedy, and uh, and I had not, I mean, where? Where were you doing comedy for the 20 years I didn't know of you? I know, Mark, and it's crazy that it, we didn't cross paths, but but I say that because you're big time. Uh -huh. But I would, in, every once in a while, I'd get a little nugget from the Christian entertainment industry, because Mark and I, when we, you were texting me the other day, I am a believer but I am more of a mainstream comedian. So, all right. So I 
But I have been so intertwined in and out of the Christian entertainment industry. Okay. Because you wanted to. You, you were I telling. Out. You were telling yeah. me all, all before we went live that it, the Christian industry is hard to break into, and it I is. didn't. And to me, it looks like it. The reverse would be true because I've never done anything but churches and Christian. I've never performed in a nightclub. I would. I'd be scared out out of my mind. You know, I mean, that's just not, you know, at least our people, if they are drunk, they're faking it out there and acting <laughs> sober, you know. I mean, I, I think it'd be intimidating to perform for, uh, I don't know why, I just never have done it. Yeah. Was well, it scary for you the first time? to go and do uh, things in the Christian space. Um, but I got started. I always wanted to do this, and I knew it as a child. God spoke to me and told me I would be doing this when I was five. Oh, wow. But through different things, you know, life is hard and, and kicks you in the teeth, and through childhood, you know, things, and I, and being raised in a little bitty town in rural, it never dawned on me to leave and go to L.A. or New York and try to make it at 18. I just didn't have the confidence, and I did what everybody else told me to do, and I wanted to marry and have children, and I went to college uh, and had a t very unsuccessful, um, <laughs> very, honey, a lot of terrible things happened in the 80s, let me tell you. And, um, <laughs> and I ended up finishing and graduating from the University of Tennessee, and they've been so good to me. But I met my husband, and he moved me to the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and had a used mobile home business. And I had what my first baby and I want to stay home with him. And so, and my husband's very tight with money and I like to get my hair highlighted. And so I started <laughs> selling jewelry <laughs> in women's homes like Tupperware, Mary Kay for premier jewelry. And I know Mark Lowry that they probably, you probably entertained many, I don't know, but you might've been too big, but they had big entertainment, Christian entertainers come to those big rallies but anyway, that was premier jewelry out of Dallas, Texas. And I didn't care a thing in the world about jewelry, but I would get, I'd <laughs> eat brownies and schlep that jewelry bag around and I would fling out that jewelry on a table and then I would get up in the middle of a living room and I kind of developed an act. Hmm. And I had a shtick and I would talk about, I was supposed to be talking about how earrings can change, a clip earring can change the look of a pump. But instead, I was talking about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids and being mad at my husband that he didn't hear the baby in the night. And women thought I was funny. <laughs> and one night, a woman pee peed on the couch. Uh oh. And I knew then, I thought, I've got it. I have it. I know I can do this. And that was one of those moments, you know, that God gives you. And I, and I thought, I, I can do this. I know uh. I can do it. And that gave me the confidence. And then I had another baby, and I kept speaking at the premiere thing. <clears throat> and look, here's another thing that, that is one of those things that you know God's speaking to you. Okay, Dennis Swanberg yes. was the big entertainment at one of those premiere jewelry things. And they, I, we were at Opryland Hotel, and I was literally nursing my second baby. And I handed her to my mama. I was in the toilet at... Opryland Hotel, and I handed that baby to my mama, Lucille, and I said, I got to go on stage. And I was supposed to be talking about how I booked so many parties so far in advance. Uh -huh. And instead, I got up there and started talking about breastfeeding hemorrhoids, whatever I did. I don't know. And Dennis Swanberg came up to me afterwards and said, you need to be a stand-up comedian. Wow. And me looking at him, knowing that he did this professionally, that gave me the confidence. I feel like God put him in my path. And, and this is sweet. I just did the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in Austin, Texas, and I was at the Paramount Theater and sold out show, had a ball, and uh, a couple got a note back to me backstage, and they said, this is from Dennis Swanberg. And he heard that story I told on Jeff Allen's podcast, who's a Christian comedian. Right, we know, I, told I know him Jeff. Dennis Swanberg saying that to me, and Dennis heard it somehow, and wrote a note saying, I'm so, that's, that makes me feel so good that I had a part in this. Wow. And and I'm so proud of you. And I never talked to him since, huh. but that was somebody professional like that. Because I had not, 
And before my husband and I married, we went out to, on a trip to see my sister. She was living in Southern California. And I went to the comedy store, comedy club, and I saw all these great comics like Dom Herrera and uh, Paul Mooney and all these people. And I've always been a big fan of comedy. And I remember sitting in that audience thinking, I could do this, I could do this. But I just didn't know how. Well, you know, who knows? God knows. Because what did he do? He put me in women's living room selling jewelry. I had my own little comedy clubs. Isn't that I something? sold jewelry to everybody, honey, all the Pentecostals, the Baptists, the Methodists. I went through everybody's church <laughs> group, elementary teachers, church group. We ate coconut cake and had a ball, and then, but that gave me the confidence to try it. And then I was living in Morristown, Tennessee, which is near Bean Station, and I just God put people in my life that said, "Hey, uh, the Rotary needs an MC, you know, at some fundraiser." And I was like, "I can do it." And I mean, I, you know, I didn't get paid, and I didn't care, and I right. just tried to do one little thing after another. And yes. then my husband. Uh, sold that business and went to work for a large mobile home company and they moved us to South Texas and I had a comedy club for the first time in San Antonio. And see, I mean, you know, I've tried to do churches and things like that, but if they don't know you, I mean, it's just as hard getting into that as it is, you know, a comedy club booking you. But I was going to Max Lucado's church and I had, I and my relationship with Jesus, he changed everything for me. Max Lucado did. I just felt the Holy Spirit. And it, and it and I don't know, it just, I knew God was with me through during this whole thing. And I would go to these comedy clubs and they would put me up at midnight. And everybody was high on marijuana and drunk, Mark. And I would be talking about doo doo balls on the t-ball field. And you know, everybody else was t telling dark, twisted mess, and I was up there talking about my babies and my husband and all that. And but I, and I would talk about my Bible study or my Sunday school class. And I feel like the whole time God wanted me there because you know people are already in church. They don't right. need me. The ones they're already going. Right. The, so I just felt like I planted these little seeds, hopefully, in my act in Absolutely. these places. But. But these comedy clubs, you know, I was different. I was very different than other comedians. And so I think that helped me. And I started driving back and forth to Austin, Texas, to Cap City Comedy Club, one of the best comedy clubs in the United States. And they believed in me and started lifting me up. And then Aww. from there, I've had television deals for sitcoms with ABC and TV Land and Nick at Night and all those things. And in and out of that... Over the last 20 years, I'd have a little tour. I toured with the Southern Fried Chicks, and we did small theaters and had a ball and did like 50 dates a year. And then when that ended, I, there would be times I couldn't get arrested, Mark. And nobody wanted to book me. Nobody cared. And then I'd get a, and I'd think, well, am I supposed to be doing this? You know, and Satan would be speaking to me. And then my manager would go, Leanne, they want to do a television show with you. And, what, and there would be little things that would keep me going. Right. And then there were, I mean, times when, you know, and then every, then I could not get booked. And then other times when I felt like I was on top of the world, you know, mm -hmm. that this business is up and down and right. it would be that way for me. And really, I mean, I had people in my life, Brian Dorfman, who is now one of my concert promoters, 20 years ago said to me, Lee, and I know you've got it. But he said, you cannot raise these babies and, and do comedy in comedy clubs. Like a traditional comic goes through Right. Week after week after week, and and he was right. Yeah, I couldn't. So I just had to carve a path, a different kind of path than most comedians. And I I look back on it, and I saw I see God in every bit of it. He put me where I was supposed to be. And you know, when when a television deal didn't make it, I would be so hurt. And then I now I look back and think. I couldn't have raised these children in Los Angeles. They would have been completely different people. That was crazy. I mean, God had such a better plan than I did. And what, in my mind, what I was going to do, I wanted to be a sitcom star because, you know, growing up, I'm six, I'm 56 years old. So to me, I wanted to be Roseanne, Ray Romano, Jerry Seinfeld. You know, I wanted all that. That's what, to me, what the pinnacle was. Right. And then, um, I tell people God had so much better plan for me and it's so much sweeter because like now I've got this hundred city tour. 
I'm going all over the United States. The people that have found out who that like me and fa- you know are fans of mine now are the sweetest people you'll yeah. ever meet in your life, Mark. And they have prob- most of them have never been to a comedy club, never bought a ticket to a comedy show, but somehow they relate to me. And it's and and it is so much sweeter than a television show in L.A. Now I think I'm too old. Like I don't even know if I could hold up under 14 hours a day. I think I'd have to have IVs. Oh yeah. You know, but this oh, yeah. tour. So has been let, let me ask you. Are, and now your your tour is is just starting, just ending, just I mean, is what um, is? Well, the COVID, the main old COVID, <clears throat> put a stop to everything. They they announced it, put dates on sale. We were all on fire. That was going to start in June, uh, March, uh, June t- 2020. Everything came to a halt. So we started back. Really, the tour at the Ryman was the first show in June of this year. And it sold out. It sold out, and I and I felt like I was not even in my own body. Isn't that wonderful? Time. That is it so was wonderful. Precious. And then. Um, yeah, I've been doing dates. I've been going every weekend. And now, you know, are you the, doing auditoriums? Are you doing clubs or ch- what, what kind of um, venues? It's, it's theaters. Um, anywhere from it started out about a thousand seats, and now they're they're usually b- between twenty three hundred and three thousand. Some cool. now are being added four thousand seats. Wonderful. I've done a couple of arenas with um, Jeff Foxworthy. And then I did um, an arena with Nate Bargatze, who has blown up the Tennessee Kid on Netflix, right. and he's got two Netflix specials. And so, um, yeah, there's there, like I sold out three shows in Atlanta at Center Stage. Well, that's about 800 seats. So now they've added the Cobb Energy Center in March for me to do that. So, yeah. oh, Mark, they, I, I can't even tell you how crazy. All right, let me tell you this. So. Uh, <laughs> This, so I thought I, I knew I had a child that got married right, right out of college, my oldest child, Charlie. And I knew that he wanted babies. And I thought, well, you know, me being from country, me, I mean, we take care of our grandbabies and they don't go to daycare. But anyway, I thought, well, he'll have a baby. And things are, you know, my career had gone great for, you know, raising three children. I did what I could do. And I thought, it's probably time for me to just let go. And my manager called and said, there's this thing they're calling dry bar comedy. And he said, they want you to shoot a special. And he said, nobody will ever see it. Nobody heard of it. He goes, I don't think it's going to hurt you. That's what he said to me. I don't think it's going to hurt you. (laughs) He said, you're already going to be in Dubuque doing the Chamber of Commerce luncheon. That's how, that's how great my career was going. Nothing against the people of Dubuque. Love y'all, love y'all, but I mean, so I go out there and do this special, and he said, just do a bunch of old material that um, nobody has seen. You can use it for clips or whatever, and so I was nervous. I hadn't done that material in a long time, and I did that special, and we thought we'd never hear a thing from that, and they released a clip of me talking about how mean my teenage girls were when they were 16, and we were scared to death of them. (laughs) <laughs> and that must have people relate to that because it's true and that got millions of views and that got me the bump I was doing a lot of women's church, like a lot of church women things where you know there's a taco truck parked outside and somebody's selling Mary Kay and you know those right. are a good time yeah and I was doing a lot of things like that and a lot of corporate private things and staying pretty busy because of that dry bar but it wasn't dry bar that, I mean, that that was a part of it, but it wasn't until I got my, these precious boys, I call them boys, they've got children, and they're grown, and I could have birthed them, though, they're uh, young enough, or old enough, I could have, but anyway, they, <laughs> they started releasing clips, and, I, and it just caught on like fire. Then they and started it, releasing them on YouTube, right? Or Facebook or yeah, all of it? Facebook and YouTube and yeah. all of it. And um, it grew from, my fans on Facebook grew from 25,000 to 1.3 million during the pandemic too. I thought I thought the pandemic was going to ruin everything. Uh-huh. It really was, um, these women would watch me. I get on my back porch, no makeup on. I look like a pig Jay bird. And I would start talking about, because my little mama has been sick and had a stroke three years ago. So I would go and take care of her 
and my little daddy, and I would talk about jello salads and, th and chicken casserole and things that I was making her because she needed pureed foods. And people would sit and listen to my me talk on the back porch. And I would tell people during that, everything's going to be okay with this only COVID. And people, um, somehow that, I don't it may have helped people. I hope it did. I didn't yeah. even mean, I was just sitting there talking out of my Well, head. I'm I sitting here. Stop. I'm sitting here right now with my mouth hanging open on hanging on every word. And I can imagine, I mean, it's like Brenda Gant has that same effect. I don't know if you oh, know her. I love her. I love her too. Well, I mean, I don't, I just love watching her videos. I'm probably never going to cook any of that. But uh, I mean, I might, I have cooked a few things she did when I cooked. But uh, some people are just mesmerizing. And you're so stinking funny. Um, I, I'm just sitting here with my mouth open, but I love the, your story. So the last two years, it blew up. Now, let me well, ask you this. Do you have trouble coming up with new material now that it's all out? Because everything you do, once it hits YouTube, boom, it's out there. Oh, yeah. And you know, Mark, that's been the challenge because it was a blessing when the boys released this stuff, but like they burned through my hour that really I had not performed on stage much. Oh. Like, you know, I gave them all a hand and, the, and I just didn't understand how things work. So once that material's out there, it's burned. They call it, it's burned. And plus this day and age, Jim Gaffigan, um, I'm, Sebastian Montescalco, all these big names have to come out with a new hour every year because they do a Netflix special or a, uh, Amazon Prime. Well, that's burn. That you got to work on it. See, when, I, I I don't mind reburning my burns. <laughs> I mean, I'll sit there because once by the time I got it figured out, it's time to stop telling it. Well, then by then I'm in love with that story. You know, they're like old songs. We sing because he lives over and over and over and over. Why can't we hear a good story? My grandmother. She would. She told me the same story every time I got with her because I would ask for it too. I loved yeah. it, but you know. But so I'm on the. You know, I like. I like to tell people I'm not trying to start a career. I'm trying to end one. That's <laughs> that's what J D. Sumner always would say too. But um, I don't. I don't want any new material because it all hurt. My 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 uh, van wreck that got pivot on your good foot out of that when i was 19 this these are old <laughs> stories uh uh the motorcycle wreck that was a funny one that's a funny story but i had to break a leg to get it so <laughs> i've been asking god for material that doesn't hurt oh know. i bet <laughs> i know well and and i came up in a time doing comedy where you know richard Pryor. Or somebody put out a comedy album, it lasts 10 years. You know, Steve Martin's first 45 minutes, I, he doesn't do it anymore. I mean, right. he said, I don't have anything else to say. So it, it is, it's hard that this day and age, everybody, you know, is just taking, eating up content, eating up content. And, and, they, and I'm so glad they're loving it. But yeah, it was freaky because all of a sudden it's like, okay, there everything is. Because mm -hmm. I didn't, okay, these boys released, I think it was the second clip they released. Me t taking my husband to see Def Leppard and Journey. And it's old people going to concerts and how bad everybody looks and everybody's got plantar fasciitis. Well, I had done that one time on stage and it, somebody filmed it and they put that out there. And I think that was the one that changed my career. And so people have not seen me do that live. So I hate that I, because it's such a good story that I, sometimes I'll do it like in an encore or I'll add it in after my new hour. But, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I and there's there's a bit I do about my baby child doing competition cheer, and people beg for that one. And I feel like you don't. I mean, some people don't want to hear old stuff. Some people do. You know. Well, tell us one that funny. tell us one that you're not using that you burned through that you'd like, wish you could tell again. Oh, long well, now. I'm look. I'm I'm in menopause and I've got brain fog. Let me think. What. Um, <laughs> Well, oh gosh, say cheer, cheer is a good one. But but Mark, can I? I don't do it anymore. I don't even know if I can remember it. But my baby child is Lord, she's twenty three now. But when she was probably in elementary school, fourth, fifth grade, she was 
grew real tall, real fast, and was taller than all the other children, the teacher, the principal, everybody. She was very self-conscious, but the good news was very strong and very athletic. And so all these teams all over the all over East Tennessee would ask us if she could come and be on their team, be the soccer goalie, they'd give her an iPhone, that kind of thing. And and uh, I made her do it because I was living through her because I didn't I didn't try hard in school and I you know I was worried about my high school boyfriend and I didn't hustle in in basketball because I was worried about my hair. Anyway, <laughs> she um started she said i don't want to play all these sports i want to cheer and i said baby we're big people and we don't tumble but i'll figure it out so i found there's a thing in the united states mark lowry called competition cheer and you're talking about sodom and gomorrah honey okay all these little children are in these outfits so we drop her off at this place in knoxville and they tell me that she's going to come and learn a two-minute routine twice a week. It's going to cost me $150 a month. And they said, here's the outfit that she's going to wear. And it was um, sequins up the sleeve. Uh, her little tummy was exposed. A tiny little skirt with a slit in it with a glitter panty underneath it. And they said, this is going to be $350. And I said, that's a whore outfit. <laughs> and uh, it came with its own little bag of poor makeup so that all the little children could look like horrors together. Anyway, so we traveled to, they said, you were going to travel to faraway lands, places like Atlanta and Cincinnati, and you're going to compete against other little horror children. So we drive and spend the night, and got all that gas money, all that hotel, all that, everybody's eating at Chili's. The next morning, we go to Coliseums where there's thousands of little horror children walking around. <laughs> It is $150 to enter your baby in this competition. <coughs> oh, my. To go in and watch your baby in this competition. They're selling corn dogs for $15. We go in. They start out with the little babies, ages, um, it's ages 5 to 18. So the little ones are 5. They come out in these outfits mm -hmm. to Beyonce's All the Single Ladies. Remember mm -hmm. that song? All the da 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 Mm. And they're little, and these little children are tiny, and they need to be at home breastfeeding. But their <laughs> mamas are in front of them doing every move with them, you know, to keep them on track because they're both. <laughs> and then all it goes up through the day. Ages get bigger, and then my child comes out. She by this time she's in sixth grade, and for two and a half minutes, mm -hmm. she throws little children up in the air, working like a Trojan, sweating. <laughs> And what she's doing is she's throwing, they call them flyers, and these are tiny little children, and they're freakishly tiny. <laughs> and their mamas are freakishly tiny people. And I don't know where these people come from, Mark, <laughs> because I'm from farming people. I've got thick ankles. I can work in the fields. <laughs> and if you saw me, I'm a big girl, and I can hold my, my babies, you know, five, nine. Anyway. <laughs> She throws these little children up in there, and the whole time these little girls are doing this. <laughs> and nobody knows why. <laughs> Have you ever seen one of these competition cheer things, Mark? Uh uh. Oh my gosh, honey. Google that. Okay, so then <laughs> the, the finale is all these little children put their forehead on the ground and my baby pops up she's the finale she pops up with a little child's foot in her hand and holds another person up over her hand while that child's doing uh, something up there and everybody goes nuts and she's like because she's a base they call it a base and she's so strong and like a mule that she can hold these little children up and then they uh begged us for her to stay and to keep doing it and she said, you know what, I'm okay, I got it out of my system. I know I've got spirit, but I'm ready to go back to playing volleyball is what she ended up playing. And um, But she kept the whore outfit. And you know, Mark, she says she's gonna get married in it, but it's hanging <laughs> down in here in the basement near me. And my boy has worn it to Halloween uh -uh. and won a year of wings because he wore it and, uh, and he's tall and thin, had this little whore outfit on. Anyway, <laughs> we've all gotten a lot of wear out of that. Oh, outfit. my. Anyway, that's competition.
competition cheer. So I have women come to my shows that have mm. got from a competition cheer gym that have got, you know, the sharks or whatever. Their team and they are and they all their kids play. I thought people were gonna get mad at me for saying that, for doing that then. Yeah. But they weren't. They were like, You're right, it's just so much money and it's the you know, and they're sexualizing children. I mean it's just you know, it's just a twisted you've got a you've not seen any of it's kind of like to, toddlers and tiaras. Did you ever see Oh that? yeah, I saw I I may have skipped through that on the Honey you know, Boo Boo. Oh yeah, 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 that was you didn't want to watch that because you're pure. No, 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 no. I remember Honey Boo Boo. That was funny. I enjoyed yeah. that. Well, yeah, well, it's kind of like that. So are you, uh, how many dates you got left before Christmas? I'm done. I, oh, you're I, done. I my last two, yeah, in uh, St. Louis and Evansville, Indiana. And then I go, I start again January the 7th, and I'll be in um, Norfolk, Virginia, Tyson's um, outside of Washington DC. They can go uh, to Le go to LeanneMorgan.com probably. LeanneMorgan.com huh? and they're adding dates all the time, Mark. So when you if people go and they say, Oh, why is she gonna be in Southern California? Yes, I will. They are working on those dates. Right now I think there's probably about fifty cities up. They're announcing some more tomorrow. They're yeah. adding shows to some that have already sold out. And don't and, you love that all you need is a microphone? You don't yeah, have to have a band. I like a glass of water. You like a glass of water. I know and you. A and a mic. I, that's you know, I've gotten to the place where I need because of soundtracks. Thank God for soundtracks. You can sing to those. Is a stool and a microphone. You know, just sit and talk to the people. <laughs> I know. And I've done things with big bands and stuff, and I see all that stuff they're doing. Like, I opened for Alabama this year. Oh. And they were precious. And it, I bet they had 500 people working on that thing. You know, you've been yeah. in all the big stuff. And I'd never been in that. And all, and they go, what do you need? And I go, I just need a glass of water. Yeah. And a cough drop in yeah. my pocket in case yeah. I start getting strangled on my own spit <laughs> because I'm 56 years old. I, all of a sudden, now I just choke for no reason. That's fine. <laughs> Um, but I said, I just need a handheld mic and a, and a good song to walk out to. And that's all I need. And yeah. I, I'm just shocked at all that, you know, these big productions do. Yeah. Do you, do you have one of those, what are they, a tech, what, a tech writer? Or is, what is that? Uh, a writer, yes. The writer, writer, writer. And yeah. They, yes. And I, I do like a good pink flush on stage because I think it makes me look younger. A pink flush. And, um. Uh, yeah, I have so a pink uh, on the on the light. On the light, I like a little pink flush. Yeah, I've never. I think heard that, that makes me look thinner, and then and I, and it doesn't. I mean, I walk out on stage and they'll ta they'll do a video, and my fanny will just. I'll be. It's like you can put a a cafeteria tray on my fanny. <laughs> um, this COVID's really, you know, I realize now I don't have good coping skills since we've been through this, but um, mm. I hate my emotions. But anyway, um, yeah, I have I have Outback Concerts as my concert promoter, and they are wonderful, and they are bad about putting chocolate in my green room, and uh -oh. I'll ask for a veggie tray, and then there's always, and I eat those veggies, and then I eat a box of chocolates. And I've, and I've told them, I had a meeting with them in Nashville last week, I said, y'all got to quit doing that to me. <laughs> I can't be, I can't say no to chocolate. Oh, chocolate does have a spell, doesn't it? It does, especially a dark chocolate sea salt uh, caramel. Mm, oh, I know. I got to stay away from that dark chocolate sea salt. You're right. That's exactly what I had. One of those last night. Dina had a whole, <laughs> one of those tall things full of them. It was incredible. <laughs> Well, listen, Leanne Morgan, I thank you for being on our little Just Whenever today. I have so enjoyed getting to know you and hear you just talk about your life and, and your story. And I'm sorry it took 22 years for me to get to know you. You know, because those, um, well, I, mean, I just wonder, how did I not know of you? I mean, I, I watch your videos now and I am on the floor. I think you're the funniest thing out there right now. And... 
I would. I hope you'll come to Houston, and if you do, you got to give me a call so I can come see Honey, you. Honey, I was just in Houston, Mark. I didn't realize you lived in Houston. I was just in Houston at the Cullen Performing Arts, but I will be back because Texas. They have been good to me. I'll be back to Texas. I'm, I'll be doing Dallas. Yeah. Um. But I, let me say this about you. All right, my mom was on her way to Vanderbilt today to get um, Botox put in her. Since she had a stroke, she gets Botox put in one eye so that it doesn't droop and for her saliva. Right. And um, she's so sharp, sharp as a tag, even though she's been through all this. Her name is Lucille and she's a doll. And I, my sister was driving her over there and I, and they said, what are you doing today? And I told them that I was gonna get to be with you. And I said, mama, he wrote, Mary, did you know? And my mama started singing that song, knew every word. And, oh, Mark Lowry, what you've done, honey, uh, you angel from heaven. My kids, we that song comes on and we ball our eyes out because we know that 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 mm, I don't even know what how to say it. But how you touch people's lives. But me as a comedian, I've watched you for years. I've watched you on the Gaithers. I've I have always held Mark Lowry up here, and I and I always would think, how did how did I get in on this? How do I do? How do? I? And you know, we both had different plans, but yeah. um, you know, everything works out for you know the way it's supposed to it but sure i'm just does. so tickled that you know who i am oh I my said gosh when, when little sweet phil said this and and got you on the phone when i was doing that for the women joe up uh, the joy conference and i said i feel like i'm talking to elvis oh i have watched you for years my wow. darling and i have i've watched you make people laugh i've watched you sing and i you are like a triple threat you're like jamie fox Beyonce, I'm trying to think of who else, honey, X and J-Lo. You're like J-Lo. Oh, my, my, my. You're so funny. <laughs> I, hey, well, maybe, listen, we just got to get together and talk and share, and I want to meet your husband, and I'd love to meet those kids. How Now, what are they doing? Tell me what the kids are doing. Okay, my um, son and his wife live 20 minutes from me, and they've had our first grandbaby, and he is a year old. He was a year old this past week, and we are nuts. Oh, and we are all just sat and stare at this baby and kiss his teeth, and, I, and he just has to fight us off. There'll be okay. new material on that. Surely yes. you'll get new material there, yeah. Yes. And my boy went to Barry College in Rome, Georgia, and met his little wife there, and she's from Marietta, and so they lived 20 minutes from me, which is such a blessing. So I get to be with them all the time, and they both work for Clayton Homes that my husband still works for, and uh, because in here in East Tennessee, the big the Clayton hires a lot of people, uh, pilot all all that. Anyway, they both love their jobs and they work all the time. And my daughter-in-law is getting her MBA, so I don't know how in the world she's doing that. When I had babies, I just sat and in my pajamas and stared into space. Okay, then my middle child, Maggie, um, works for East Tennessee Children's Hospital in, in nonprofit and raises money for them. She has a heart for children going through illness. She yeah. worked for Make a Fish right out of college, and then now she works for the East Tennessee Children's Hospital and loves it and raises a lot of money for them, and she's very dynamic. She's like uh -huh. me. If that anyway, and then when we believe in something, you know, we can... Okay, and then my baby child um, is 23, and she went to school in Manhattan for makeup for television and film and special effects, huh. and she's about to work on her first major motion picture in New Orleans for Sony, and during this mean old COVID, she's had to be with us because everything shut down, and she had this movie deal um, 18 months ago, but it's been moved like four times, and then out of the hurricane moved it again. But she's been doing a little mm. bit of work um, in the makeup industry and then also doing stuff for me, helping me. She wants to kill me. And she's <laughs> tired of her mommy and tired of unloading suitcases with Soma panties in it and all that. <laughs> and then, um, but she she should go to New Orleans. Let's hope and pray this happens in uh, January. And she'll have her first major motion picture under her belt. And so she's very excited about that. Right now she's living with us and we all just hang on this baby. And my husband is anal retentive, type A, overachiever, works like a dog. But honey, when this baby was born, he's like, I'm getting a car seat. And he goes and picks him up at daycare. And 
He's like a baby nurse and might as well have on white stockings and orthopedic shoes. <laughs> anyway, we're all hanging in there, Mark. We got two beagles and we want everybody to have, get married and have a bunch of kids because we uh. are very much into dogs and babies. And my two girls are looking, honey. They're looking, they're, you know, they're looking for men. Okay. Mom. Well, yeah. that sounds I mean, like a... Know, I think young people don't know how to flirt anymore. Yeah. Uh, I could get a man right now. You know, even <laughs> after all this has happened to my body, a hernia and a mesh, and I got all kinds of horrible things going on, but, you know, I could still get out there and get a man. But, you know, anyway, I don't need one. I don't need another one. I don't I don't mean uh, that. I'm not, I've got the one I've got. And I have you ever just out. talked and talked and talked and you get right about there and you go, wow, I wish I hadn't walked down that that venue you know I, I, <laughs> i've i have literally been talking like you just were and said and, and all of a sudden now you're looking for a man and do you <laughs> how how did that happen <laughs> how did that happen honey i'm crazy i know, I don't know half the time what i'm saying that's it I'm see a oh i tell everybody daddy talked when he had something to say me and mama talked until we had something to say <laughs> you know we did. We that's did. Me. Yeah, but isn't that's that a me. isn't that's that a, a good way of putting it. that's a fun way to live though too? Because I literally sometimes don't know what I'm thinking till I hear myself say it. I mean, I, I'm a talk thinker. I'm a talk thinker, and you know when I met Little Phil that introduced us, and I did that show. Now I'm regretting the horror um, story. I, and I said to Phil, I go, Phil, I said the word whore. He goes, honey, it's in the Bible. Well, yeah. And he just hugged me and loved on me. And are they not precious? Are they I hope precious. I get to go back and do that again. That was, those women, good night. That was a bunch of women. Oh. You get a bunch of women together. Oh, you did you not have a blast? I had a ball. And you told me I would. And I'm I telling you. Uh, they uh -huh. they just are so glad to be away from their children and husbands and get with <laughs> other women and just worship without having to worry about kids and i mean and they they're there to find something they're there for renewal yeah, i love that whole environment you're right they are and that little debbie and phil and all them they were precious but you're right and see i used to get to go on retreats like that with my girlfriends uh -huh. our bible study would go and we'd watch um, beth moore would be at something and then entertainers and all that and i haven't I haven't been able to do that for you know because I've been on the road. Well, now you and are I, you are the entertainer. <laughs> me and a big girl. Oh, well, well, all right, you angel. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Leanne, for I doing this. You know, you well, I appreciate you, and let's stay in touch. Do not come to Houston without calling me. You have my number now. I know. I promise. I'll never let that happen again. All right. God bless you, honey. God bless you and Merry Christmas, you Merry angel. Christmas. All right, everybody, I'm going to let you go. I have enjoyed today. We'll sing tomorrow if I, if I go live. You know it's just whenever, just whenever I feel like it. So I will see you when I see you. Bye-bye.